Watch original photos and videos related to this news by clicking on the link given in the description below the article courtesy. Please subscribe our YouTube channel Listen News here. If you like the video please like, comment and share the video. Your Galaxy S20 experience will vary based on where you've bought the phone. Like previous generations, Samsung is offering two variants of the Galaxy S20. Samsung sells Snapdragon 865 powered phones in North America, and in most global markets the Galaxy S20 series is powered by Samsung's in-house Exynos 990 chipset. This isn't new, Samsung has been dual sourcing chipsets going as far back as the Galaxy Note 3, which debuted back in 2013. With two distinct variants of the Galaxy S20 up for sale, it's time to find out if the Exynos 990-powered version of the S20 is on par with the Snapdragon version. Snapdragon 865 vs. Exynos 990 design, 7 nanometers nodes, external modems While Samsung hasn't detailed why it uses both Qualcomm and its own Exynos designs in its phones, we can make a few guesses. Qualcomm has an effective monopoly on the CDMA standard, and for Samsung to offer its phones on Verizon, it needs to use a Snapdragon chipset. So why doesn't Samsung just use the Snapdragon 865 everywhere? The manufacturer stands to make more money in global markets by pushing its in-house solution instead of paying Qualcomm, so it uses Exynos chipsets in GSM-only markets. There are several differences between the two designs, but let's focus on the commonalities. Both the Exynos 990 and Snapdragon 865 are built on a 7 nanometers node. The Exynos is manufactured at Samsung Foundry on a 7 nanometers LPP process, and Qualcomm's design is manufactured at TSMC on an N7P process. Both chipsets are built on a 7 nanometers node, and they both use external 5G modems for connectivity. Samsung's Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography EUV solution is the way forward for mobile chipsets as it leads to smaller, faster, and more energy-efficient designs, and TSMC's Deep Ultraviolet Lithography DUV is a refinement of a proven formula. Both designs also lack cellular connectivity, with Samsung pairing its chipset with the Exynos 5G modem 5123 and Qualcomm using its Snapdragon X55 5G modem alongside the 865. As Samsung has more control over its in-house design, it is selling the Exynos 990 in both 4G only and 5G configurations, with the former available in countries like India where there won't be any 5G connectivity for a few years. In doing so, it is able to save costs and pass on those savings to customers. As a result, the Galaxy S20 series in India is more affordable than its US counterpart, with the base model retailing at the equivalent of $905 rupees). Samsung has a £100 differential between the 4G and 5G models of the Galaxy S20 in the UK, so if you're wondering, that's what the 5G modem is worth in a phone right now. Snapdragon 865 vs. Exynos 990 benchmarks, Qualcomm still in the lead. Although Samsung made considerable gains in the mobile SoC segment with its Exynos chipsets, its designs aren't quite on par with what the best that Qualcomm has to offer. That was clearly the case in previous years, and things are unchanged in 2020 with the Galaxy S20 series. Qualcomm has been in the lead for three years now, but Samsung gained a lot of ground with the Exynos 990. Before we get started, let's take a look at what's on offer with each chipset. The Exynos 990 has a combination of three cores, there are two high-performance Mongoose M5 cores at 2.73 GHz, along with two Cortex-A76 cores at 2.50 GHz, and four energy-efficient A55 cores at 2.0 GHz. The Snapdragon 865, meanwhile, has newer cores, there's a single A77 core running at 2.84 GHz, three A77 cores at 2.50 GHz, with the four A55 cores at 1.80 GHz. 
On the GPU side of things, the Exynos 990 has the Mali G77 MP11, with the MP11 indicating that 11 shader cores are active. The Snapdragon 865 has the Adreno 650, a refresh of last year's Adreno 640. Qualcomm has been the runaway leader in this area for the last three years, so it will be interesting to see if the Mali G77 with its new Valhal architecture is able to hold its own against the Adreno 650. I'm on the 4G-only variant of the Exynos 990 Galaxy S20 SMG 980FDS, and my North American colleagues are using the Snapdragon 865 versions, Era Wagoner has the regular Galaxy S20, and Andrew Martinik is using the Galaxy S20 Ultra. I'm also adding the Realme X50, a $500 value flagship, to the list as a baseline for the Snapdragon 865. We ran the tests at 120Hz and 60Hz just to see if there was a noticeable difference between the two modes. As the 120Hz mode is limited to FHD, that's the resolution we used for 60Hz as well. Interestingly, we found that the S20 performed worse in 60Hz mode, suggesting Samsung is throttling the chipset to conserve power. Performance CPU Graphics Browser PCMark Work 2.0 Higher is Better Device Performance Web Browsing Video Editing Writing Photo Editing Data Manipulation Galaxy S20 Exynos 990 120Hz 1198711053 7676-11056-28017-8636 Galaxy S20 Exynos 990 60Hz 11945 12307 7614 10789 28255 8515 Galaxy S20 SD 865 120 Hz 11933 10626 7431 11566 26676 9939 Galaxy S20 SD 865 60 Hz 10265 8021 59 21-11427-29609-7790 Galaxy S20 Ultra SD 865, 120Hz, 12556-12090, 7654-12449, 27436-9877 Galaxy S20 Ultra SD 865, 60Hz, 10677-8846-6142, 12 2626423-7919 Realme X50 SD 865 90Hz 13307-13803-6272-14649-37295-8823 13 PC Mark Work 2.0 does a fantastic job emulating real-world usage conditions. Unlike other synthetic tests that are algorithm-based, PCMark focuses on real-world scenarios. Let's break down the numbers, kicking off with the web browsing test. This particular test is targeted at the A55 cores, and we see that the Exynos 990-based S20 has a marginal lead over the SD865 version. The fact that the A55 cores on the Exynos 990 go up to 2.0 GHz contributes to the slight advantage here, with the SD865's A55 cores going up to 1.8 GHz. The video editing test uses OpenGL S2.0 and stresses factors like video playback. The scores are broadly identical across both variants of the S20, but it is interesting to see that the SD865 S20 fares worse in this test in 60Hz mode. The writing test stresses the system's performance as it measures how long it takes to open, edit, and save a document. It is a great indicator to day-to-day -day performance, and the SD865 variants of the S20 pull ahead of the Exynos Verizon. PCMark's photo editing test is particularly interesting because it measures how long it takes to open, edit, and save images. This test is designed to emulate how your phone performs when adding filters and beautify effects to your photos. Both chipsets perform at the same level, with the Exynos 990 eking out a lead over the SD865 versions of the S20. 
That said, the SD865S20 in 60Hz mode posts the highest score of any of the S20 units. Finally, the data manipulation test measures how long it takes to parse data from different file formats and the frame rate while interacting with dynamic charts. The SD865 takes an immediate lead here over the Exynos 990, but once again we see that the scores in 60Hz mode are lower than 120Hz. Overall, the Exynos 990 version of the Galaxy S20 fares very well, and it holds its own with the Snapdragon 865 in most scenarios. The key takeaway here is that Samsung seems to be throttling the chipset in 60Hz to deliver better battery life, as normally you would not see such a difference in scores from the same device. Also, there is a noticeable variance between the Snapdragon variants of the S20 and Realme X50 even though both devices are using the same hardware. The Realme X50 is running at maximum frequency for the duration of the test, unlike the S20, and that's what is causing the higher than usual scores. Snapdragon 865 vs. Exynos 990 battery life better than last year One of the biggest issues with Exynos designs in the past was battery life. Samsung's decision to chase higher frequencies meant that the Exynos versions of the Galaxy S9 and S10 had poor battery life figures when compared to their Snapdragon counterparts. The Exynos 9810-powered Galaxy S9 was so bad that Samsung had to issue a software update throttling the chipset to fix battery life issues. The Exynos 9820-powered S10 was similarly dogged by battery life woes last year. With the Galaxy S20 series, Samsung seems to have made amends to an extent. I've used the Exynos 990-powered Galaxy S20 for just over two weeks, and I didn't have any issues with battery life. I regularly got screen on time of over 5 hours over the course of the day with 120Hz enabled throughout. That said, there are plenty of users over on Reddit that are seeing less than stellar battery figures from the Exynos-powered S20 series, so it looks like Samsung still has some work to do in this area. Overall, the Snapdragon 865 version of the Galaxy S20 is once again the better option over the Exynos 990 variant, but not by a huge margin. Samsung fixed a lot of the underlying issues with Exynos-based designs in the past, and the Exynos 990 variant of the S20 is a great phone. It may not be quite on the same level as what Qualcomm is offering in terms of energy efficiency, but it is faring better than previous generations. All the power Samsung Galaxy S20 the flagship that has it all. The Galaxy S20 is packed with the latest hardware money can buy, there's a Snapdragon 865 chipset under the hood, 12GB of LPDDR5 RAM, UFS 3.0 storage, and exciting new camera modules. Combine that with all-day battery life and a stunning 120Hz AMOLED screen, and you get the best phone in the market today. $1,000 at Samsung.